Emotive, sporty, elegant. Words that were foreign to the Skoda brand a couple of decades ago, but are becoming increasingly apt as the company continues to push itself up market. This is the Mark's smartest and most sophisticated car yet, the Enyaq IV Coupe. A more dynamic take on this Mark's first modern era electric vehicle, the Enyaq IV SUV. An aspirational Skoda? Really? Absolutely. That's what we have here in the form of the brand's Enyaq IV Coupe, an EV with attitude. On the face of things, this is just a more sporty looking version of the Enyaq IV hatch, delivered because the brand program required it. We've already seen the same thing with the Volkswagen ID4, which gained a coupe cousin with the ID5, and the Audi Q4 e-tron, which could be had in alternative sportback form. The Enyaq IV coupe, though, is rather more significant for its maker than that. It's the first coupe that Skoda's made in its VW-owned era, the last since the final rapid model left the factory in 1990. More significantly, it's easily the most expensive Skoda ever made, and in this top VRS form, the fastest too. To most eyes, it's also the most elegant car ever to wear the Czech maker's badge, the company claiming that this model perfectly combines emotion with efficiency. We'll see. This Coupe Enyaq IV variant was announced in spring 2022, but initially on sale here only in this top VRS form, before more affordable versions arrived to flesh out the range at the time of this test in early 2023. By that time, a wider Enyaq range was certainly needed, the standard shape Enyaq IV having sold over 50,000 units in its first two years on sale, with further 115,000 orders still to be delivered as we made this film. So, the outlook certainly promising for this coupe model, but promising enough to sustain sales of this swoopier variant at near premium prices and in a market overstuffed with high quality contenders. So, has Skoda overstretched itself here? Or is this yet another step forward for the brand in its relentless march up market? To know which, you're going to need Car and Driving's Road Test, the industry's most comprehensive video test. Let's get to it. The Enyaq IV Coupe is a more mature take on what a full battery sporting mid-sized SUV ought to be. Yes, even in this bespoiled VRS form. Get comfortable and it's all as normal as the Czech brand could make it. No galloping graphics, no melody of bings and bongs, just an image of the car on the instrument screen ahead together with battery charge and range which changes to a digital speedo when you put your foot on the brake. There's a starter button on the steering column, but you don't really need it because sensors in the seat register your presence, allowing you to push the little drive selector down into D, at which point to the accompaniment of a deep chime, the electronic parking brake automatically disengages as you ease away. It's a long time since a Skoda's built a coupe, but when the brand did so in the past, it always went about it somewhat differently. So it is here. It's very difficult to get an EV weighing 2.2 tonnes to drive in a sporty fashion. And the Czech maker hasn't gone to much effort to try and make this one do so here. Yes, most Enyaq IV coupes come with the sport chassis we're trying today, lowered 15 millimetres at the front and 10 millimetres at the rear. And the centre of gravity with this coupe body style is slightly lower than it is with the ordinary version of this car. But none of this is enough to much change the measured, unflustered drive demeanour that exemplifies the entire Enyaq model line. Pretty much everything about the way this car drives is geared to lowering the heartbeat rather than raising it, which you might find a touch disappointing if you've stretched to this top VRS version, expecting it to be an engaging sequel to a previous line of very creditable Skoda VRS badged hot hatches. Yes, this top model does turn into corners with a touch more bite, but basically all the badging designates is that this is nothing more than just a slightly faster Enyaq. 
By slightly faster, with this VRS we mean 299 PS, a handsome 460 Newton meters slug of torque and 0 to 62 miles an hour in 6.3 seconds from a twin motor all wheel drive powertrain using the 77 kilowatt hour battery that all Enyaq IV coupes share. Maximum speed rises to 111 miles an hour, up from the usual Enyaq IV figure of 99. We think though that most would be equally happy with a slightly more affordable 80X Sportline Plus model, which uses exactly the same mechanicals, but with a slightly lower 265 PS combined output from its twin electric motors. That variant's only three tenths of a second slower to 62 miles an hour and has only 35 Newton meters less pulling power. You don't have to have twin electric motors with your Enyaq IV Coupe and if you've decided you don't need them and that a single motor rear driven version of this car will suffice, then you'll be pointed to the two IV80 models which use a 204 PS motor on the back axle generating 310 Newton meters of torque, sufficient to propel the car to 62 miles an hour in 8.2 seconds. As with all Enyaq IV coupes, these slightly more sensibly priced variants provide a drive mode selection system that'll alter throttle feel, steering feedback and climate system settings via a choice of eco, comfort and sport modes. Plus, there's an individual menu which allows you to select your own parameters. This top VRS version adds an extra traction mode and if you've paid extra for the pricey Max package, That'll give you DCC, or dynamic chassis control, adaptive damping, then the various modes will alter ride quality too. We've got DCC fitted here, a system you can control via a natty screen slider in the individual section of the drive mode selection system. But we think you'd be fine without it because ride quality with the standard springs, something heavy EVs in this class usually struggle with, is actually very good here, certainly better in our estimation than is the case with the equivalent Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron and Volkswagen ID5 versions of this same design. There's a suppleness over poor surfaces and speed humps that's unbettered in this class and it's complemented by superb standards of refinement. Yes, all EVs are quiet, but all the underbonnet hush usually does is emphasise things like wind noise and tyre roar. There's little of that here, and if you were to add into the mix the optional semi-autonomous driving aids that come as part of the travel assist pack, you'd get yourself a very comfortable long-distance cruiser indeed. Long distances in an EV, well, that's all pretty relative, isn't it, at the moment, as battery technology struggles to keep up with consumer demand for electric cars that can be used just like combustion engine ones. As we'll tell you in more detail in our cost section, this Skoda does pretty well here. The base spec rear-driven model's best possible 339 mile range reading betters its Q4 and ID5 cousins by 11 miles and is bettered in class only by base Polestar 2. This twin motor VRS model's 321 mile reading isn't quite so eye-catching, but it's still in the upper echelons of what you can currently expect from an EV of this sort. In our time testing this particular Enyaq IV Coupe, we've been reasonably impressed by how close the car's been able to get to its official figure, though in order to regularly crest the 270 mile barrier between charges, you'll need to be spending quite a lot of time in town or with a notably restrained right foot. Either way, it helps enormously if you remember to frequently engage the transmission's regenerative B mode we mentioned earlier and activate the recuperation selection paddles that most models offer behind the steering wheel. As with any EV, the range figures just quoted would rise if you predominantly used your Enyaq IV Coupe for urban driving. As we suggested earlier, suburbia, not Silverstone, is this Skoda's natural habitat. And you're not encouraged to use the throttle much in this car anyway. You have to get beyond a nasty click point if you go much beyond a three-quarter level of pedal travel. If you happen to have chosen a rear-driven Enyaq IV Coupe, it's in suburbia that you'll particularly appreciate the advantages that in this form this Skoda gains from having its powertrain, the electric motor and its associated single-speed auto gearbox mounted on the back axle. This frees up the front wheels completely for steering duties, 
which is why the turning circle is a London taxi like 9.6 metres, better even than the brand's very first EV, the tiny CityGo EIV city car. Even this dual motor Enyaq IV model's 10.5 metre turning circle is only a fraction wider than that little city go. And as a result, all versions of this car feel superbly manoeuvrable for a crossover nearly 4.7 metres in length, allow you to jink through traffic hold-ups and dart into spaces. As with other electric vehicles, this one's town travel is also characterised by its need to constantly emit a strange E sound intended to warn pedestrians of its intending approach. You wonder though why it's necessary for this feature to sound so otherworldly. Other brands use film composers to create more pleasant melodies. The rear-driven format also benefits this Skoda beyond the city limits, allowing a near 50-50, virtually perfect weight distribution, which, together with a low centre of gravity provided by the central battery pack placement, helps disguise those extra battery kilos. Traction through the turns with all models is excellent, though there's a touch more body roll than you'd get with the alternative Volkswagen and Audi versions of this VW Group design. Given the kind of car this is, that's not really an issue, but we do wish Skoda would do something about this model's rather anaesthetised level of steering feedback, which we criticise with the ordinary Enyaq, and which unfortunately hasn't been altered with this coupe version. As part of the pricey Extra Cost Max package we mentioned earlier, a progressive steering setup is offered, which uses a variable steering rack and pinion gearing to give more direct responses to larger steering angles. But direct responses still aren't the same as feelsome ones. Not that typical customers for this car will care very much, and if they did, they'd probably be better off buying something else. This Enyaq IV Coupe, even in this VRS form, will suit EV folk with more relaxed driving habits. They'll also like the way that this EV is forward-thinking without being rather irritatingly futuristic, which, as we observed with the standard Enyaq IV, is a hard trick to pull off. But Skoda has once again managed it here. Assuming you want a family EV, you'll choose this car, of course, because of the way it looks. The standard Enyaq IV hatch is quite a smart piece of penmanship, but its boxy lines are still somewhat, well, sensible. Just the sort of thing you'd expect from a modern Skoda. But this isn't. There's some real pavement presence here, thanks to the sharply raked roof line from the B pillar backwards. In a shape that's four millimetres longer and six millimetres taller than its SUV sibling, with short overhangs, big wheels, strong shoulders, and a low roof line, this will look good down at the gym. And you'll cause even more of a stir with a brighter colour specified, like this special hyper green. This car certainly makes a statement here at the front. A grille may be unnecessary to cool an EV, but modern automotive design looks ugly without it. And with this hexagonal appendage, flanked by angular crystal lighting LED headlamps, Skoda's gone all in. The standard grille has a sculpted chrome frame, lots of crystalline elements and numerous vertical slats. Here though, we've got the crystal face grille selected, standard on this VRS version and optional on mid-range models. It can illuminate with 131 LED light strips to produce an effect rather unkindly likened by one writer to the teeth on a Halloween skeleton costume. We actually think it looks rather distinctive. Other frontal features include the way this dramatically raked windscreen flows into this prominent central bonnet crease and further down a lower air intake with hexagonal detailing is flanked at the bumper's outer corners by twin narrow aerodynamic fins. It's from the side that you realise this Enyaq IV Coupe to be quite a large, slightly upmarket thing. It's 4,653 millimetres long, that's 36 millimetres less than Skoda's more conventional Octavia hatch. But here there's a far sleeker silhouette, hence a slippery 0.234 CD drag factor and a vast panoramic glass roof, which is standard across the range, which gives this car an elegant vibe. 
You'll need large alloy wheels to set the shape off. The entry-level 80 variant has 19-inch rims, but usually this coupe will be sold with 20-inch alloys, and this VRS version can be had with 21 inches as an option. Most versions of this Skoda will be ordered with the sport chassis that features on this VRS variant, which drops the body 15 millimeters lower at the front and 10 millimeters lower at the rear. As with the ordinary Enyaq, pronounced concave indentations in the lower door panels are there to give the flanks some shape. At the rear, this coupe Enyaq model is a very different looking thing than its standard showroom stablemate, thanks to this swept back tailgate glass and emphasized lower diffuser. The slim LED tail lamps are linked by Skoda block lettering, and this VRS variant is marked out by a full width lower red reflective strip. We're also particularly pleased to see that a rear wiper has been fitted here something that quite a few of this Skoda's similarly shaped rivals do without. More important, as usual, is what you can't see, namely the Modulara e Entriebsbaugesten, or MEB, platform, which translates from the German as child's building set. This, sure enough, represents the building block basis for the host of VW Group and Ford EVs we'll be seeing over the next few years. Of more direct interest here is that, as you'd expect, the chassis is shared in this segment by its closest cousins, the Volkswagen ID.5 and the Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron. Enough with the outside, let's take a look in the cabin. Which, unless you've already tried the identical front of cabin experience offered by the ordinary Enyaq IV model, will be nothing like anything you'll ever have experienced in a Skoda, either in terms of quality or design. This Checkmaker's cabins have in the past often been about as interesting as daytime telly, but this one's different. For a start, you're left pleasantly confused as to exactly what kind of car this is, thanks to the way that the slightly raised seating height of a crossover has been somehow combined with a windscreen that pushes so far forward you'd think you were in a big MPV. Then there's the dashboard, unusually contoured in a series of layers with textile finished soft plastic at the top, giving way to a midsection that, depending on the trim level or design selection package chosen, will be trimmed either in fabric or, as here, in lovely stitched leather. Just below, as a finishing touch, there's a shiny chrome edged trim panel that curves around the fascia and can illuminate with ambient lighting. It's all really very upmarket, yet combustion engine converts will feel instantly at home with none of the rather weird and futuristic trimming and design flourishes found in this segment with cars like Ford's Mustang Mach-E or indeed that closely related Volkswagen ID.5 model we just mentioned. This cabin could do with a touch more visual charisma though, even in this top VRS variant. But then that's often been an issue with Skodas down the years. At least the Czech brand has had its own say in the inevitable use of fitments required from the VW Group parts bin. In place of the infuriating unilluminated sliders you get on that rival Volkswagen ID.5, there's an always on climate bar on the center screen and that VW's awful touch-sensitive steering wheel button panels have been ignored too in favour of proper buttons next to these smart knurled silver barrels that look rather nicer than they feel to touch. Otherwise, once you've worked out that the start button's hidden on the steering column and that the transmission is marshalled by this tiny button between the seats, your first impressions of this cabin are going to be centred around its screen technology. The ENIAC ignores the current trend for portrait centre displays, but this 13-inch landscape-orientated monitor is still fashionably big. Nor, thankfully, has Skoda been tempted to follow the Tesla trend for mounting driving instruments onto it. These sitting instead in a conventionally binnacled colour screen you view through the steering wheel. We'll start with that. It's clear and simple, if rather small. Rivals deliver instrument displays twice the size of the little 5.3-inch monitor provided here. And once you're ready to get underway, the initial Enyaq car graphic gives way to a digital speedo with time, temperature and speed limit displays at the top of the screen and battery and range readouts at the bottom. Gear selection intrudes from the right when you need to see it, while this button on the right wheel spoke extends out a section from the left that can show cruise control and drive assistance graphics. 
As is the norm these days, that large accompanying central touchscreen has inhaled most of these secondary controls, though up to eight physical buttons are provided for in the mid part of the centre stack. One of them, badged Climber, offers quick access into ventilation functions that on the move might otherwise be awkward to quickly find on the monitor above. This is also one of those screens you don't actually always have to touch. Just hovering your finger near what you want is often enough to activate the feature required. Like most modern infotainment monitors, this one's capacity for over-the-air updates will allow the brand to continually improve it, and as usual with displays of this sort, your home screen can either be split between several key functions or be composed of rows of little icons like a smartphone. There are, of course, all the usual navigation, DAB radio and Bluetooth features displayed with super sharp graphics plus Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless smartphone mirroring, accessible through Skoda SmartLink. The voice control setup, which can converse in up to 15 different languages, works quite well too, allowing you to do things like adjust the temperature, play your favourite song, make or receive a call, or give directions, though annoyingly it still can't adjust drive modes. Otherwise, pretty much anything else you might want is accessible once you wake the system up with the words, OK Laura. We referenced cabin quality earlier. To us, the materials seem nicer and classier than those you'd find in a pricier Volkswagen ID5, and you'd have to spend quite a lot on upspecking uh, an Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron to make that car's cabin feel nicer than this one too. Everything certainly seems to have been well screwed together by the Czech Mlade Boleslav factory, the only plant outside Germany permitted to produce a Volkswagen Group EV model. The seats are also as good as they look, generously proportioned and supportive with standard lumbar adjustment. There are some lovely touches too, like the preset Skoda summer, winter, ocean, race and individual settings for the background lighting and the smart section of the climber ventilation system, which gives you useful presets for warming and cooling functions like warm my feet, warm my hands and cool my feet. Not everything's perfect, of course. Frontward visibility can sometimes be compromised by these long, shallow angled front A pillars and the wide rear C pillars don't do much for your over the shoulder view either. So it's just as well that parking sensors and a rear view camera are standard across the range. If your chosen Enyaq IV Coupe has the parking package plus option fitted, an auto system that will steer the car into spaces, it will also come with the brand's useful trained park assistant feature that enables you to save parking manoeuvres for the places you visit regularly. What about cabin storage space? Well, you'd think this vast dashboard could swallow just about anything, but apparently not, because opening the glove box reveals a pull-out compartment halved in size for reasons Skoda's designers haven't troubled us with. Compensation comes not only with deep carpeted door bins, but also the vast open 11.4-litre area below the lower centre console, which includes twin USB ports, unfortunately only of the USB-C sort, so you have to have this rather unsightly USB-A converter lead, and space for the extra cost phone charging mat, which ought not to be optional in a car of this price. Just behind this area lies a couple of cup holders, though take the central divider out and this becomes another compartment. Another narrow cubby runs alongside the drive selector and there are coin slots by the electronic handbrake switch. You also get this big 6.2 litre stowage box between the seats capped with a height adjustable ratcheting stitched lid and incorporating a pull out tray, an illuminated interior, an elasticated side wall strap and a lower removable lidded box. Plus there's a ticket clip in the driver's sun visor and another on the A pillar. That last item is trumpeted as one of Skoda's simply clever features, most of which to be honest aren't very remarkable and many of which are optional. And being simply clever doesn't apparently extend to providing something as basic as an overhead compartment in which to put your sunglasses or drawers beneath the front seats. It does, though, get you something you'd otherwise only find on a Rolls Royce. An umbrella concealed within the driver's door. Only evident when you open the door. 
Now let's head rearwards and check out what's in store for those on the back seat. Does the coupe roof line mean headroom compromises for those in the rear? We'd had some concerns about this before trying this car. After all, the Enyaq IV Coupe has a roof line 9mm lower than the standard model. Plus, with this body shape, you also have to have this vast panoramic glass roof, which further eats into headspace. As it turns out, though, unless you're particularly tall, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. And as in an ordinary Enyaq IV, you'll find legroom that's difficult to better in the segment. This is also a wider cabin than you might expect a mid-sized SUV to be able to provide. And with no central transmission tunnel to obstruct things, three adults could actually fit reasonably easily into the back of this car. This bench doesn't either slide or recline as it would in Škoda's Karok or a Kodiak SUV, or indeed in the EV market in a rival BMW iX3. But otherwise it's all good, though without that glass roof, it'll all feel a bit claustrophobic back here thanks to the blanking off of the rear quarter light windows that reside within the vast rear C pillars. As you'd expect from a Škoda, there's a reasonable amount of storage provision, including huge door bins, along with map pockets and pockets for mobile phones, both stitched into the back of the front seats. Coat hooks feature on the B pillars and the grab handles, plus you get individual overhead lights, central vents with a storage cubby and pop-out cup holders in this central armrest. Most models get these tri-zone climate controls back here too. We're going to finish with a look at the boot, which, by the way, you'll have to use for all significant cargo storage because unlike with some other rival EVs in this class, there's no extra luggage room in the nose of the car. That's taken up by the air conditioning system and power electrics for the driveline. On the way to the very back, we'll check out this charging flap with its battery indicator. A reeled up, tethered, extendable charging cable would have been a lovely, simply clever touch here, but perhaps we'll have to wait for that. By the way, this is an area which, unlike on a combustion model, doesn't incorporate the usual Škoda ice scraper and tyre tread measuring slab of plastic. But don't worry, that's been secreted instead into the left inner side of this tailgate, as you'll discover when you raise it. Now, above base trim, it's power operated with a virtual pedal kick action function. And once everything's raised here at the back, a big 570 litre space is revealed. Just 15 litres less than a standard shape Enyaq IV. That's 21 litres more than you get in a Volkswagen ID5, 35 more than an Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron, and a massive 168 litres more than you get in a Ford Mustang Mach-E. It's also 49 litres bigger than the trunk of the kind of Škoda Karok many Enyaq customers might otherwise have chosen. Despite the presence of an electric motor down under the floor here, which eliminates the possibility of having the usual fully sized underfloor central storage area, or of course, any sort of spare wheel. You do though get this deep narrow well beneath the cargo base's leading edge into which the charging leads can just about be stored. But that can be annoying when you need to get to those cables and the boots full of luggage, hence our irritation that there's no stowage area beneath the bonnet. Only one charging lead, by the way, the one for your wall box and public charging, is supplied as standard. Appallingly, on an EV of this price, you have to pay extra for one you'll occasionally need with a three-pin socket. There's a reasonably high lip to lump your stuff over, and annoyingly, a variable height boot floor costs extra, though at least one's available, unlike in an ID5. The recycled cargo bay base carpet feels cheap and abrasive, but once you get your items in, the space provided is square and very usable, with wide recesses capped by removable plastic panels at either side, so things like golf club bags will more easily fit. Up to eight carry-on suitcases could be accommodated, one less than an ordinary Enyaq IV, but two more than you'd get in a rival Ford Mustang Mach-E. On the right side of the load area, there are two of the most solid-feeling fold-out bag hooks you'll ever find, plus a 12-volt socket. There are also six floor tie-down points and a bright left-hand LED light. 
The rear bench doesn't split flexibly 40-20-40 like it does in, say, a rival Tesla Model Y or that BMW iX3 we mentioned earlier, but Skoda does at least provide a ski hatch so that longer items can be poked through into the cabin. Annoyingly, what you don't get unless you pay extra are catches to release the rear seat backs, so flattening the rear bench is more of a faff than it should be. Once the rear bench is retracted, there's up to 1,610 litres of capacity loaded to roof height, 100 litres less than in an ordinary Enyaq IV. You'd have trouble though sliding heavy items all the way to the back because the cargo base is heavily stepped. There's no fold flat front passenger seat option that would enable you to carry longer items like surfboards, so these will need to go on the roof which, equipped with the appropriate cross rails, can take up to 75 kilograms of load. At first glance, pricing for this Enyaq IV Coupe might look a little ambitious for a Skoda. Unlike the standard Enyaq IV, only the larger 77 kilowatt hour battery size is offered here. So the price starting point is obviously higher for this Coupe, around £45,000 at the time of this test in early 2023. That gets you the least expensive IV80 rear driven 204 PS variant with another £5,000 getting you the same drivetrain but more dynamic looking Sportline Plus trim. The twin motor all wheel drive version start from around £52,000 which gets you another Sportline Plus spec model, an 80X variant with a 265 PS electric motor. Beyond that there's only the top all wheel drive VRS flagship variant we have here which has a 299 PS motor and at the time of filming listed at just under £55,000. Sounds quite a lot, doesn't it? Skoda, though, is only charging what the rest of the industry does for mid-sized crossover-themed EVs of this class. In fact, as we'll see in a moment, in most cases, like for like, it's actually charging less. Before we get to that, though, you'll want to know the premium required for this coupe model over an ordinary boxier Enyaq IV SUV, which is between £1,700 and £1,900, depending on variant. OK, let's get to those segment alternatives and begin by considering those that compete with mainstream versions of this Enyaq IV Coupe. Starting with the two that share exactly the same engineering on offer here, the Volkswagen ID5, the Coupe version of the ID4, and the Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron, the Coupe version of the Q4 e-tron. You won't be surprised to hear that an Enyaq IV Coupe undercuts identically engineered 204 PS rear-driven 77 kilowatt hour battery versions of the ID5 and Q4 Sportback e-tron handsomely in mainstream rear-driven form by 6,000 to 7,000 pounds. You might though be interested to learn that it also undercuts the 204 PS rear-driven 77 kilowatt hour battery versions of the more mundane looking ID4 and Q4 e-tron 2 respectively by around 1500 pounds in the case of the VW and by around 5000 in the case of the Audi. So if you like the VW group approach to EV engineering and you're at all interested in value then this Skoda is without doubt the place to get it. Most potential customers for this Enyaq IV Coupe, though, will be considering all kinds of mid-sized crossover alternatives in this class. There aren't any others that call themselves coupes, but quite a few have that visual element of desirability that this Skoda is trying to emulate in this sportier form. If you're looking at an outlay of around £45,000 on the base rear-driven version of this model, then you'll want to consider these price comparisons. At the time of filming, which as we said was in early 2023, a rear-driven Tesla Model 3 cost from around £43,000 with a base spec Kia EV6, Polestar 2 or Tesla Model Y, all retailing from around £45,000. Add another £1,000 or so to that amount and you'll open up access to cars like the Toyota BZ4X, the 77 kilowatt hour version of the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the 63 kilowatt hour version of Nissan's Aria. If you've a little more to spend, just under £50,000 gets you a single motor Volvo C40, while just over £50,000 gets you a Ford Mustang Mach-E in base standard range form or a Mercedes EQA 250 Plus. 
A front-driven Genesis GV60 costs around 54,000, and a BMW iX3 is priced right up at around 64,000 pounds. Those are your single motor segment alternatives. If you're considering an outlay starting from around £52,000 on a twin motor all-wheel drive Enyaq IV Coupe 80X, then you'll be interested in the all-wheel drive model segment price comparisons. As we filmed, base twin motor versions of cars like the Tesla Model 3, the Kia EV6, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, the BMW iX1, the Subaru Solterra and the Nissan Ariya all started at just over the £50,000 mark. The 53,000 spend would get you dual motor versions of the Polestar 2, the Mercedes EQA, the Toyota BZ4X, the Tesla Model Y or the Volvo C40. But you'd need around £58,000 for the cheapest all-wheel drive Genesis GV60 and around £65,000 for the cheapest extended range all-wheel drive version of Ford's Mustang Mach-E, by which point you'd be getting into the kind of price territory occupied by cars like the Jaguar I-Pace, the Mercedes EQC and the BMW iX. A final word about the specific value proposition of the Enyaq IV Coupe VRS model we're trying here. Priced, as we said earlier, from just under £55,000, this has exactly the same 299 PS, 77 kilowatt hour battery, all-wheel drive powertrain as you'll find in a Volkswagen ID.5 GTX, which costs nearly £2,500 more, and the Audi Q4 Sportback 50 e-tron, which costs nearly £3,000 more. And the price difference to both the Volkswagen and the Audi would widen further if you equipped either to the standard of this VRS badged Skoda. If having considered all of that, you conclude that it is some kind of Enyaq IV Coupe that you really want, then you're going to need to know about the standard spec across the range. So let's take a look at that now. All Enyaq IV Coupes come as standard with a desirable panoramic glass roof, but otherwise the spec tally is much as it would be with the ordinary Enyaq IV, which means that even the most basic version of this car comes with full LED headlamps, LED tail lights, auto headlamps and wipers, rear parking sensors and power folding mirrors. Plus, to meet EU law, this car, like all EVs, has an exterior e-sound feature, which emits a futuristic noise at under 12 miles an hour to warn pedestrians of its impending arrival. There's also a drive mode select driving mode system and a rear view camera. Plus, the base IV80 variant gets 19-inch Regulus anthracite alloy wheels. Inside, all Enyaq IV coupes feature a virtual cockpit instrument screen, an air care climatronic two-zone air conditioning system, a leather trimmed and multi-function steering wheel, an auto dimming rear view mirror, cruise control with a speed limiter, lumbar support for the front seats and LED ambient lighting. Also standard across the range is a big 13-inch touchscreen infotainment display, which gives you a whole range of media features that can be accessed either by touch or via Skoda's LoRa natural voice control system. That central monitor features a DAB Plus tuner, Bluetooth and Skoda's wireless smart link setup, which gives you Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. The base spec model comes with its own rather spartan loft level of cabin trim, but even that does include fabric and artificial leather upholstery and a front centre armrest. Plus, of course, across the range, there's an app. There's always an app, isn't there? This one's called the Skoda Connect. And as usual with an EV, it's of the sort that can preheat or even cool the car and set charging times. Plus, the app helps you find and use over 150,000 public charge points and works with a single charging card you can use right across Europe, which includes access to Ionity's high-speed charging stations along major highways. Also included are online traffic information services and using the app, you can do things like remotely lock or unlock the car, flash its lights to help you find it in a car park, browse your Enyaq's service history and check whether the charging cable is connected. If it is, you can start or stop charging sessions from your sofa. To get going with all this, you simply download the free application, set up a user account, add your Skoda, and then activate a Skoda Connect contract, at which point the functions become available for three years. 
So that's covered the things you get with all Enyaq IV coupes. Most customers for this Skoda though, as we said earlier, are going to want to go further, at least as far as one of the mid-range Sportline Plus models, which come in either 204 PS rear-driven guys or 265 PS all-wheel drive form. This trim level gets you a more dynamic exterior look, courtesy of 20-inch Vega anthracite metallic alloy wheels, sports bumpers, black exterior styling, and intelligent matrix beam headlights. Keyless entry, acoustic side windows and rear privacy glass also come included at this level, along with brake regeneration steering wheel paddles and adaptive cruise control. Inside, at Sportline Plus level, there's carbon effect decor, front sports seats and upholstery in an Alcantara, micro suede and leather combination that also features on the dash. There are also aluminium look pedal covers, a special three-spoke sports steering wheel, heated front seats, tri-zone climate control, a wireless charging mat and rear side window blinds. Finally, there's the all-wheel drive only VRS variant we have here with its powerful 299 PS output. This top performance model replicates most of the elements of Sportline Plus spec, but has a look set apart by unique 20-inch Taurus alloy wheels, a lower body height, a full width rear reflector strip and a bespoke body styling kit. Plus, the drive mode select system has an additional traction driving mode profile. This VRS also benefits from the inclusion of a signature Enyaq IV feature that's an option on other versions of this car, the unique crystal face front grille, which illuminates this appendage with 131 LED light strips. You'll either like that look or really hate it. Inside an Enyaq IV Coupe VRS, there's a choice of either VRS Suite or VRS Lounge trimming packages, the former with full black perforated leather and the latter offering a combination of leather and microfiber upholstery. Enough with standard spec across the range, let's move on to options. Now, if you haven't stretched to this top VRS level of trim, the first thing you're going to need to decide upon with your chosen Enyaq IV Coupe is whether to upgrade to one of the optional trim packages. Most customers choose one of these. There are three options. For £1,200 more, there's the lounge package, which is characterized by a suede-like microfiber cabin finish with matching stitching and fabric door inserts. If you want a more luxurious leather vibe, you'll be directed to the Sweet package, which is £1,380 more, which gives you leather upholstery with stitching and piping in cognac brown with piano black decor and artificial leather door inserts. The final option is the Eco Suite package, £1,650 more, which ecologically tans its cognac brown leather upholstery with the extract of olive tree leaves rather than with chemicals. There are also contrasting details in stone beige and matching leatherette for the door inserts. Once that's sorted out, you can then look at wheel options. There's various 20 and 21 inch rims available. Beyond that, most of the options are bundled together in extra cost packs. If you're buying the base 80 model at the foot of the range, want more kit, but don't particularly need the sportier look of the pricier variants, then spending just under £3,000 more on Skoda's so-called clever package will get you just that. Basically, all the key features we briefed you on with Sportline Plus trim without any of the sporty exterior and interior trimming. If you're choosing that base 80 spec, you'll also be offered a pricey plus package, which gives you, well, quite a lot, actually. A powered tailgate with kick activation, LED matrix beam headlights, LED tail lamps, headlamp washers, a power adjustable driver's seat with memory functions and power adjustable lumbar support. Stretching to that plus package also gets you a range of Skoda assisted drive package plus elements. Basically a portfolio of camera tech that includes emergency assist, lane assist plus with narrow lane assist and urban evasive steering support. Plus the semi-autonomous drive tech included in the brand's travel assist system. More on all that when we get on to safety. 
As you'd expect though, the real niceties when it comes to options can only be had if you avoid base trim. With the more expensive Sportline Plus and VRS models for just over £2,000 more, you'll be offered an advanced package which gives you everything from the Plus package, so all that extra camera safety stuff, along with a few extras that'll spoil you a bit more. A head-up display, an upgraded Canton sound system, heated rear seats, a heated windscreen and the illuminated crystal face front grille we mentioned earlier. If you're rather bravely prepared to double that extra spend, the top max package we have fitted here gets you all those advanced package elements plus two key drive features, DCC or dynamic chassis control, adaptive damping and more direct progressive steering. The Max package also includes parking tech, an area view camera plus an intelligent park assist system that'll slot this Skoda into spaces together with a useful trained park assistant feature that enables you to save parking maneuvers for the places you visit regularly. And the Max package additionally gives you nice to have touches like power adjustment for both front seats and a massage function for the driver, plus a heated steering wheel and rear side airbags. Across the range you can add practical features too. We'd want the transport package which gives you an adjustable height variable boot floor, cargo sidewall, rear seat backrest release catches and a net program in the boot. You could also pay extra for all weather floor mats, a charging cable bag, mud flaps, protective door sill foils, a protective covering for the leading edge of the boot lip and smart holders to which you can attach phones or tablets. You might additionally like to consider Skoda's electrically retractable tow bar or the transverse roof rails that allow you to specify carriers for roof boxes, skis, snowboards or cycles. Annoyingly though, Skoda wants £680 extra for the universal 32 amp or 230 volt charging cable you'll need for use with domestic sockets. And on base or Sportline Plus trimmed Enyaq IV coupes, you'll almost certainly need to be paying your dealer extra for your choice of paint colour, because the only standard shade is solid energy blue. It's a little different with this VRS variant, where most of the colour options are free of charge, including this rather bright hyper green special shade. Though the top two colours will cost you more, velvet red and phoenix orange. Let's finish as we always do with a look at safety. Now you'd expect some sort of forward collision warning autonomous braking system on a car of this kind these days. And sure enough, Skoda's is called front assist. And as usual with these sorts of setups, it scans the road ahead as you drive. If a potential collision hazard's detected, you'll be warned. And if you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting collision. It incorporates swerve support that stops you from turning into a junction into the path of another car and an oncoming vehicle braking while turning feature that helps you at junctions. Plus there's dynamic road sign display which pictures speed signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. And every Enyaq IV Coupe also gets a lane assist, lane keeping assist system that warns you when you stray out of your lane and applies gentle steering assistance to ease you back into it. All of this is in addition to all the more usual features that come fitted on every Skoda family model, which have together helped to justify this car's five-star Euro NCAP safety test showing. There are twin front side and curtain airbags, though disappointingly you don't also get an extra one to protect the driver's knees. You do, though, get a clever centre airbag, a feature first introduced with the Volkswagen ID3. In the event of a side impact or rollover, this airbag can prevent the driver and front passenger from colliding with each other. Rear side airbags, as we mentioned earlier, only come with that pricey extra cost max pack. Across the Enyaq IV Coupe range, there are of course ISOFIX child seat fastenings on the rear bench. And it's also worth mentioning that one of the features of the Skoda Connect app we mentioned earlier is an emergency call or e-call SOS system that in the event of an accident where the airbags are triggered will automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. 
Other conventional safety features include the normal ESC stability control and ASR traction control systems, plus an ABS braking system further assisted by CBC or cornering brake control through the bends. Plus, an HBA hydraulic braking assistant, which helps reduce stopping time when you really slam on all the anchors in an emergency. Plus, like all Enyaq IVs, this one gets a hill hold function to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, plus tyre pressure monitoring. And there's a standard driver alert feature which monitors your reactions for drowsiness and will, if necessary, prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee. If you want more in terms of safety, then obviously you'll need to pay more. Now, as we told you earlier, for more advanced camera-driven safety tech features, you'll need either the Plus package on the base 80 model or the Advanced package on Sportline Plus or VRS variants. We mentioned those features earlier. Emergency Assist, a setup which can take over driving duties completely should you become incapacitated, steering the car to the side of the road and bringing it to a safe and gradual stop. Lane Assist Plus, which tracks road markings to help you steer through awkward traffic sections, emergency coned lanes for instance, and urban evasive steering support, which assists you in sudden low speed steering manoeuvres in panic situations. Plus, these packs also include the Volkswagen Group's Travel Assist Tech, a system that can basically take over acceleration, steering and braking duties from you and is particularly helpful in slow stop-start traffic. We've not been especially impressed with the driving range figures delivered by this Skoda's identically engineered close VW Group cousins in this segment, the Volkswagen ID5 and the Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron. But we're minded to be more positive about this Enyaq's IV Coupe's capability in this respect, partly because it costs a little less to buy and partly because it goes a little further on a charge. We'll give you the WLTP rated mileage figures, 339 or 332 miles for the rear driven version, depending on your choice of either base spec or bigger wheeled Sportline Plus trim. The all wheel drive version manages 317 miles in 80X form or 321 miles in this sporty VRS guise. To give you some VW Group perspective on that, with the same rear driven powertrain, 204 PS motor and 77 kilowatt hour usable battery combination, the best a Volkswagen ID5 or Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron can manage is 328 miles. And if you're comparing against this all-wheel drive 209 PS Enyaq IV Coupe VRS models 321 mile figure, you'll be interested to note that a directly comparable all-wheel drive Volkswagen ID5 GTX manages 314 miles and an Audi Q4 Sportback 50 e-tron just 308 miles. Rather to our surprise, the figures for the rear-driven single motor versions of this Skoda better nearly all direct class rivals. Only the standard range single motor version of the Polestar 2 does better, with a 395 mile showing in its latest form. Otherwise, the 339 mile figure we quoted you for a base Enyaq IV Coupe 80 variant seems pretty good. Looking at the best possible mileage readings from non VW Group base spec single motor rivals. The Kia EV6 gets closest with 328 miles. The Toyota BZ4X manages 317. The 77 kilowatt hour version of the Hyundai Ionic 5 is 315, and the rear driven Tesla Model 3 is 305 miles. A base Ford Mustang Mach E can only go 273 miles. A rear driven Tesla Model Y manages 267 and a 63 kilowatt hour Nissan Ariya, just 223 miles. It's a slightly different story with twin motor all wheel drive versions of this Skoda. This VRS model's 321 mile range figure is about the same as you get from a Tesla Model Y performance at 319 miles, a dual motor Volvo C40, 316, or a Kia EV6 all wheel drive, 314 miles. But this all-wheel drive Skoda's showing is easily bettered by the Tesla Model 3 performance at 340 miles, the extended range all-wheel drive version of the Ford Mustang Mach-E 
341 miles and the dual motor all-wheel drive Polestar 2 368 miles. Other non-VW group all-wheel drive contenders in this segment though have a mileage figure between charges beginning with a 2 so this Czech brand's mileage range showing can still be classed as very creditable. Of course, if you'll merely be using this Skoda as a second car for mainly suburban duties, the total range figure it ultimately delivers might not hugely matter. After all, the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders tell us that 94% of UK journeys are of less than 24 miles. Though you'll need to bear in mind that as with all EVs, the quoted range figure here could drop considerably in winter weather or over long motorway journeys. Whatever the range figure of the Enyaq IV Coupe model you select, it will, as ever on an EV, be heavily influenced by things like extreme temperatures, gradients and the amount of weight being carried. But of course, the major contributory factor will be driving style. You'll need to select the car's B regenerative braking setting provided by the gear selector. With this engaged, the electric motor functions as a generator and feeds power back into the battery and you'll experience stronger off-throttle retardation. You'll also need to frequently select the drive mode select system's most frugal eco setting and activate the car's eco assist automatic recuperation assistant via the centre screen. Eco Assist uses navigation data, traffic sign recognition and the car's sensors, radars and cameras to support an economical driving style with the aid of instructions on the instrument screen. These take the form of either symbols for an approaching event like a speed limit or a crossing or a little foot on pedal icon which prompts you to come off the accelerator. If you don't use the Eco mode, the B setting and Eco assist regularly, you'll find that this car's range figure will drop quite a bit, but all EVs rely on the driver to use provided efficiency tools if they're to reach the claimed range mileages. We've been averaging about 280 to 290 miles of range from this VRS model on this test, which we'd suggest will probably be pretty typical. Though in one instance, with brisk driving and the heater going, that dropped down to around 260. 60 miles. The Czech maker claims an efficiency consumption of 4 miles per kilowatt, but we've got down as low as 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour at times during this test, averaging about 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. A data section on the centre screen will enable you to keep up with your miles per kilowatt consumption in terms of since start, long term and since charge scenarios. In all circumstances, the car does at least do its best to help you out a bit. In really cold weather, you can in theory improve the quoted figures, or at least preserve them, by specifying the optional energy efficient heat pump that Skoda wants to charge you over £1,000 more for, but which several other brands in this segment include as standard. This is supposed to save up to 4 kilowatt hours per 62 miles driven, which means that in the winter, a heat pump equipped Enyaq IV Coupe would travel up to 30% further on every full charge, in theory. We reckon you'd only really make that investment back in increased mileage if you lived in an outlying area with regularly cold winters. What about the charging regime? Has charge been mastered here? Well, certainly Skoda's getting more of a handle on it. When we first tested the standard Enyaq IV back in 2020, we were dismayed to find that some base variants could only charge at up to 50 kilowatts, a very feeble speed indeed. There's fortunately none of that nonsense here. All Enyaq IV coupes can charge at up to 135 kilowatts, which means that owners will be able to use the new generation of ultra fast public chargers. These can't come soon enough for our market, updating a UK charging network that one Mercedes executive recently dismissed as a cowboy outfit, something you'll identify with if you live outside this country's major population centres. Skoda's done its best to help by providing its EV owners with a Skoda Connect app that helps you find and use over 150,000 public charge points. At a DC 100 kilowatt charging station, it'll take no more than around 29 minutes to recharge a rear-driven Enyaq IV Coupe with enough direct current to replenish the battery from 10 to 80%. It'll be 36 minutes for an all-wheel drive model. Back at home, an AC1 phase 7.2 kilowatt garage wall box would replenish any Enyaq IV Coupe from zero to full in about 13 hours. 
can almost halve that time if your property or business can support a gutsier AC3 11 kilowatt charger. At the other extreme, think in terms of needing to double the 7.2 kilowatt garage wall box charging times we've just quoted if you merely connect to a conventional three pin domestic socket. Remember also that your home's cheap off-peak electricity allowance is likely to be for no more than around six hours, so it'll be important to use the Skoda Connect app's Smart Schedules feature, which enables you to program charging to take advantage of lower rate tariffs. This also allows you to preheat or pre-cool the cabin so that you don't have to waste energy with the climate fan once you get underway. Obviously, you can also set charging times from the cabin centre screen and on that display add your most local charging locations as well. The charging socket is located on the driver's side rear wing and a charging screen is accessed in the vehicle section of the centre dash display. There, a locations tab points you to your nearest charging station. Or there's a data section that offers selectable since start, long term and since charge sections, each briefing you on mileage, journey time and average speed, plus energy consumption and current consumption in miles per kilowatt hour. What else? Well, you won't only be saving money on energy costs. Driving into congestion charge zones will be free until 2025, and you should also make savings in road tax. More significantly, as with any EV, your company benefit in kind tax rating will be pitched at 2%, which of course is massively less than you'd pay for a similarly sized and powered combustion engine model. Comparable versions of Skoda's Octavia, for instance, are BIK rated between 28 and 36%. This ENIAC super low BIK rating is down, of course, to the fact that, like any EV, this one claims a zero emissions CO2 figure, though, of course, the energy to drive this car has to cause pollution somewhere. Government figures give this Skoda a well to wheels carbon contribution of 58 grams per kilometre. Either way, this Skoda is some way from being completely green. Residual values look promising. The standard Enyaq IV holds on to between 57 to 61% of its original value after three years and 36,000 miles, and we'd expect this coupe version to slightly improve on that. You might be a bit shocked by the insurance groupings here if you're moving over from a combustion model. Insurance groupings are high with any EV, mainly because brokers worry about the increased cost of accident repair with electric vehicles and the possible need to replace the entire drive system battery if you were to be involved in a collision. Still, this Skoda is a lot more affordable to insure than most of its segment rivals. A base rear-driven Enyaq IV Coupe 80 is rated at Group 27E, for an Enyaq IV Coupe Sportline Plus, it's Group 29E in rear-driven form or 33E in all-wheel drive guise. For this top VRS all-wheel drive model, it's Group 36E. An Enyaq IV driver will enjoy lower maintenance costs than would be needed for a combustion model. Obviously, no oil changes are required and regenerative braking means that the brake pads are designed to last the life of the car. There's a fixed servicing schedule with a basic inspection after two years, unlimited mileage, and subsequent services every year or 18,750 miles. Skoda says that its aim is to make sure that the battery pack lasts as long as the car too. And sure enough, that battery pack is warranted to have at least 70% of its usable capacity after eight years or 100,000 miles. There's the usual unremarkable three year or 60,000 mile Skoda warranty, only the third year has a mileage limitation. And there's a 12 year body protection guarantee, a three year paint warranty, and three years of Skoda assistance, which includes European breakdown cover. Arguably, this is the first Skoda with a degree of real desirability, and it won't be the last. We really liked the standard Enyaq IV hatch when we tried it. All the car was lacking was a bit of visual pizzazz, a bit of want one factor, which this Enyaq IV Coupe delivers with a plume. It's an EV with a confident sense of style from a brand clearly growing in confidence by the year. 
There are, of course, as with any EV, lots of sensible reasons why you might want this car. But the value proposition is what's most likely to catch your eye when the sums are added up. In this segment, more lifestyle oriented coupe-styled versions of cars like this usually cost significantly more than their boxier standard SUV body shape showroom stablemates. But the Enyaq IV Coupe's price premium over the standard Enyaq IV body shape isn't huge and it manages to undercut even conventionally shaped versions of obvious rivals, most notably those VW Group models sharing its MEB platform and 77 kilowatt hour battery engineering. Not everything's ideal, of course. Other rivals give you more options when it comes to things like drive modes and controlling brake energy regeneration. And this Skoda isn't really that engaging to drive, even in this supposedly sporty top VRS form, where the required outlay can get you some seriously premium feeling alternatives. But it feels a very complete product. And for us, a significantly more tempting one than its pricier Volkswagen ID5 and Audi Q4 Sportback e-tron VW Group stablemates. Style at a saving then. That makes sense to us.